Well, good evening, Facebook. So one thing I noticed about the stem on my pipe was that the structural integrity around the structural integrity around the, my billiards stem is a wee bit flimsy. So to tighten the stem on my pipe, I would heat it up and what ended up happening was it weakened the structural integrity of uh, the piece that connects to the uh, pipe. However, I found another pipe stem and the stem was from a pipe I bought at a cigar shop. In fact, this was a curved pipe I bought from the Cigar Rialto. And the goddamn bowl had broke. And when I tried to fucking fix it, I kind of got it, but then it just got worse. And I noticed that the makeshift attachment piece that I put in this stem right here, if I can pull that out, I might be able to use that to strengthen the integrity of the uh, structure of the uh, pipe stem. So I had a rather interesting day today. I was walking home from a friend's house Facebook and lo and behold, I get stopped by a cop carrying my scepter while I'm fucking with the thunderstorms that we were having today. And they're like, sir, is that a knife? And I'm like, what? Is that a knife? No. Why would you think that? Oh, we got a report of a suspicious character walking down the street with a long knife. Someone called in and said it was a knife. So why are you carrying it? I says, well, because I'm spiritual. It's the simplest way to explain it. You know what I'm saying? And he goes, oh, wait, you got the King Cobb watch. You're, you're, you make videos, don't you? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, I thought I recognized you right on, man. He's like, well, can I see your ID? And I go, yeah, man. I have my ID. He runs me. I'm clean. No warrants, no arrest record, nothing. Well, you're free to go. Here's your ID. I, you know, I have fun playing with the storms, I guess. That was the end of that. But he, he he's checking me and my buddy's IDs. He's got his buddy standing behind him. And this third cop shows up. His female gets out of her squad, right? Out of her squad car. And buddy's standing... His buddy standing behind us was like, no, nah, we're good. You know what I'm saying? Because they could see we were being compliant. We weren't standing there being obnoxious. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm, just, I'm like, really? I'm getting stopped for this. Do you think Christians are ever stopped for carrying a Bible? The answer is no, they're not. But a Bible can be used as a weapon. You can hit somebody with it real hard. It can also be used to brainwash people. It's been done before. Drink the Jesus juice. <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck is this shit? Now, it could have ended a lot worse because I was compliant and honest with them and didn't give them any issue. They were very easy with me. You know what I'm saying? Although there might be some politically bigoted asshole who would say, check your privilege. And I'm like, well, here's the thing, man. Like, it doesn't matter, man. Like, you make their life easier. They'll make your life easier. You act like you ain't got nothing to hide. They ain't gonna, you know what I'm saying? Fuck with you. It's just that simple. And yes, there are some situations where 
it's fucked, you know what I'm saying, like completely. But um, in most circumstances, at least if you tried to be compliant and there was evidence of you being compliant and you weren't, were not being defiant or anything like that, then then you might actually have something, you know what I'm saying, like then you got irrefutable proof. I thought to myself as I'm walking home from another friend's house, I was hanging out with Scotty earlier, as you saw. I do apologize for that earlier, although I shouldn't have to apologize because it wasn't my fault. I'd rather not get in the middle of it. Things are cool now, I guess. I mean, Scotty and Tina are no longer together. That's understandable because of certain things, you know. I'm not going to drag their personal shit on the Facebook. That's for her and Scott's business, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do a, a peaceful food review on social media. And Tina had to blow up my Facebook Live with talking to Scott. And instead of standing there and talking about it calmly on chat, I kept on telling Scott, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. They're just like shitholes talking shit on YouTube. She's trying to get a rise out of you. Ignore it, ignore it. Kept on going. Eventually, Tina stopped blowing up my chat. And then just completely shows up unannounced and starts yelling at Scott through my window for the whole goddamn neighborhood to see. And it was just rude and completely disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? And what's she going to say? Oh, I'm sorry, but, you know, Scott just blah, 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 blah. It's like, not whatever, okay? Whatever you and Scott going on is between you and Scott, okay? The whole fucking world doesn't need to fucking know it. And sitting there making a two-hour video talking shit about him and then posting it on your Facebook. Like, I hear about some of this shit, okay? If you and Scott are not working out, then don't force it, but still be there for each other in a sense for melody's sake you know what i'm saying and it's like i said at the end of my video i, I did uh delete my facebook live video and my youtube video just because of all the fucking drama dude like the sandwich i ate at subway was so delicious earlier and i didn't want that that drama and negativity being associated with a delicious sandwich, you feel what I'm saying? And um, so I do apologize for that video. I'm sure you're all looking forward to that. And that was my bad, too. You know, if I would have just filmed the video of me and Scott eating sandwiches and reviewing them on QuickTime Player and left it at that, and if I had a Facebook Live and said, what up, guys? So check this out. We got a Subway sandwich food review coming up, and then that would have been a much better way to handle that had I known what was going to happen. But it is what it is. I don't know if I can get this little piece out. That might be wedged in there pretty fucking tight. But if I take my uh, trusty billiard X105 fishtail smooth finish billiard tobacco pipe, and I've had this thing for over a year now. And that stems tight, but it's not super tight. Like, it shouldn't be that easy to turn, considering it's only a little over a year old. And I'd use the lighter to heat it up and shit, and I think that's what's doing it. I mean, there is a way to, like, shrink it a little bit. Or maybe add stuff to it to make it thicker. I could add a little bit of uh, Gorilla Glue right along that plastic. Let it dry. I don't even want to begin the next batch of wands until this one... This fourth batch is mailed off. Like straight up YouTube. Straight the fuck up.
So I don't know if this piece will come out because this was a piece I tried to MacGyver to fix it. And it didn't quite work. And of course it doesn't want to come out. Last time I checked Facebook, um, uh, looking for supplies to work on it, and it's not. Here's the thing about Facebook. Last time I fucking checked, long ass knives don't have copper wrapped around them. They don't have a pointy core. They, they don't have a pointy quartz crystal poking out of them. I mean, really, it's common fucking sense. You think I'm gonna be carrying a knife that big as my sector around town? The answer is no. Come on now. You know what I'm saying, Facebook, like that, that, that shit makes me really wonder about our society anymore. It's, how the fuck are you going to mistake? I mean, from a distance, okay, but if you see a bolt of lightning hits the sky and it, gleam, and it gleams across the quartz crystal, you, you're going to look at it and go, oh, okay, it's obviously not a a long ass sword with a knife on the end. It's a fucking wand, huh? If you are living on your own or dealing with cops and you want to make your life easier, don't bullshit with your landlord and don't fucking bullshit with cops. And I guarantee you, your life will be a lot easier. Makes you stop and wonder anymore what exactly, and that's nothing against Christians, but a Christian can walk down the street waving the Bible in the air, no one says shit. But if I walk down the street, or someone walks down the street with a wand in their hand, it gets you know suspicious looks and oh, what's this person doing? It's religious intolerance is what it is. 
And I'm not the only person that experiences it to some degree. Every religion minus Christianity will experience it and has experienced it. And it's unfortunate, but Christians have a history of being dickheads. Not all of them are mean, but I mean, back in the day, they were just like, well, da 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 da, we're gonna, you know, sacrifice children to make the crops grow better, sort of shit. And of course, Christian, ancient, when you hear about the shit in the ancient Bible, you're just like, what? The fuck, dude. And people would argue, well, times are different. Exactly my point. If times are different, then why is it that people feel so... Uh... I mean, I get it. The sector is somewhat intimidating. The energy coming off that thing. I mean, you just look at it and you can just feel it. You know, it's one of those things. But that's no excuse to fear what you don't understand. People have often construed magic to be some sort of evil thing. If you practice magic, you must be an evil person. Not necessarily. It depends on the magic you cast. And who you cast it against. And what kind of spells you're doing. Because, oh yeah, man. There's some real fuck shit out there. Now, wedging some tinfoil around the, that little piece where the mouthpiece connects to the bowl and then kind of pushing in like that. That made a wider diameter around it. Now it's nice and tight now like that. I mean, it doesn't really need this little tin foil piece, but because the stem is still tiny enough, but uh, a pipe stem should not be able to uh, turn that easily. It's just no. Instead of using tin foil, I could find some kind of metal. I could just wrap around that and then as soon as it wedged into place you know what I'm saying but yeah Scotty was dealing with some depression earlier and as a friend whenever you have a friend that deals with depression or is going through a, a tough time if you're their true friend, you help them out with it, you know, and let them vent and say what they got to say. And I tried to relate some some of my experiences to what Scotty was saying. And eh, that's all you can do sometimes is try. We don't want the tin foil to be stuck in there.
Mm. A little piece of tin foil right there. I'm gonna put in the stem right there, it's stuck, and then it coming out. But I can still hit out of it. So I might have created like a little screen. Oh shit. Well, my next solution would probably be like a strip of painter's tape, maybe. I'm not actually doing this thing. Very well. And then as soon as I told the cop that had me pulled to the side, on the sidewalk talking to me about my sector, about how I use it to mess with thunderstorms, you know. I waved my wand as soon as they were leaving, and they both saw me just conjure a wicked flash of, like, lightning and shit. Just to emphasize my point as they were leaving. And then they were like, whoa, dude, they're kind of you could just kind of feel them checking that out, like, okay, that's uh, that's not normal. Most humans don't do that kind of shit in the open. They're kind of, you know. Now for my next trick, let's make drama disappear. And here's the thing of it. If you're the kind of person that bitches about drama and then turns around and starts drama, you're a fucking hypocrite. By the definition... And you can't sit there and say that someone else ain't perfect when blah, 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 whatever. And when a lot of it's he said, she said bullshit. It's like, dude, I don't want to be in the middle of it. You know? And rule number one about social media, if you, if you and your couple, if you and your significant other as a couple, whatever the fuck you want to call them, each other, it's whatever relationship, if you and your significant other are fighting to the point where there's yelling and disagree heavy disagreements, keep it off of social fucking media, dude. Like, you don't need people knowing your personal business, man. Oh, so it looks like you and so-and-so are having a fight again. That's typical. You know, that kind of crap. It just gives people juicy gossip. Oh, you're not going to believe what I heard. No, do tell. But rumors are just fucking rumors, and that's just that. And I didn't give a fuck about me personally. I was more or less like, dude, my neighbors don't need to fucking hear this shit. Tina coming over and yelling at Scott, like, that's exactly my point. Like, dude, I was sitting there, my anxiety was going through the freaking roof. I was like... Why is Tina doing this shit right now? You know what I'm saying? Like, I had an awesome video. Just two homies chilling out, grabbing out on some subway, doing a video for YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Casual, whatever. And then that shit had to happen. Now, Scotty left me the other half of his sub because he wasn't going to eat it. He was full as I didn't. You know, you bought him, you have it, okay? I had it earlier. It wasn't that bad. It was actually kind of good. Especially after having a couple of drinks, and then I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll do it. Well, that painter's tape seemed to have tightened up that stem a little bit. Cool. And it's like, a little bit of it that's still stuck on there. It ain't coming off. There we go. That's right. Got to stand very nicely. Huh. There we go.
you feel the smoke tobacco in your apartment and you want to eliminate the smell of it, you got to get yourself some of this. This stuff is awesome. Crack a window. And if you got neighbors that don't smoke, then you want to blanket the door so the tobacco smoke stays in the apartment and it's just sucked out the window. And, um, Seven little scores of that. I'm kind of that up nicely. That'll create like, yeah, I gotta give these people some free advertising, man, because, uh, yeah, this Ozium smells great. Covers up the smell of stinky bathrooms. Even if you're not a tobacco smoker, maybe you're taking a wicked shit and you want something to cover the smell quickly. This'll do it. This will do it very nicely. Now, I'm not sponsored by the company that makes Ozium, but I will give anybody that does good on their product a good review. And if you need something to hide the smell of nasty poops, or maybe the smell of tobacco, there you go. And there's some people who smoke indoors will light a candle. But then you want them to go knocking it over and starting the fire, and you definitely don't want that. Incense work, but you gotta have a tray. So the ashes are attached in the tray. And certain incense just have that smell to them, you know? And you know, yeah. Boom. So I'm hanging out with homies earlier, I'm like, you know, my pipe stem shouldn't be this loose. A load of painter's tape seem to solve that problem right quick. Simple yet ingenuitive. And you saw how loose it was earlier. I could turn it with ease now. It takes a little bit of, uh, to turn it, you know what I'm saying? And painter's tape is pretty easy to replace. So if it comes off and, you know. Now that my pipe stem is tight and clear, and trying to use tin foil to uh, um, wrap around that area right there, a little bit of it got stuck right in there in the stem, but it, it didn't affect the airflow of anything. I might just added a filter to my pipe by mistake. So it might feel like a paper clip that I used to clean out my stems and dig it out. Let's start in there. I don't know, take a look. No one. Yeah, I see that chunk of... Yeah, it's in there. Shit. I see that chunk of uh, tin foil on that stem. Yeah. That's Some pipe smokers will tell you, get a pipe cleaner, get pipe cleaners. Go to your cigar shop and get pipe cleaners. Those work, yes. Or you can get a paper clip. You bend it out, put a little hook at the end. And if it's long enough to go through your stem, you can reuse it over and over and over again which is a nice little feature. The thing about pipe cleaners is eventually they wear out. So if you want to clean your pipes of all that tobacco tar in a more cost efficient way, and this is definitely the way to do it. You're sitting there going, okay, the heating up method does work to a degree, but then it'll get loose again. 
And you don't want to do that heating up method too much like I've done in the past because that'll loosen the structure around the plastic on your stem. Now, Dr. Grabo's, this piece right here is made out of metal and therefore is automatically fitted tightly. But that one's plastic on that end and over time and over use, it will eventually uh, get loose. So there's things you can do to tighten it up. You can have like a putty around it, just a very thin layer of putty, let it dry and then pop it back into place. But I'm not seeing that painter's tape come off. That's pretty sweet. Now that the stem is nice and tight, and I noticed that a little bit of painter's tape wedged in right there and pretty much stuck to the stem right here. That's, yeah, that's not coming off very easily. Cool. Life hacks, baby. You're sitting here going, you got a tobacco pipe you like to smoke out of, but the stem gets loose and you take it to a pipe maker, tighten it up. Like it's costly. And then you gotta wait for it to be in, in his or her shop. And then it fucking comes back and it's brand new great. But then all the time you're sitting there going, uh, you know, using just a little bit of painter's tape to tighten that stem up it created more depth around the diameter of the stem piece right there, which caused it to tighten up. And I gotta ask herself, you know, I gotta ask Tina, and um, no offense to, but what would happen if Scott just randomly showed up to Tina's house when Tina was hanging out with her friends, watching Melody, having a good time on her day off. And Scott just came over and started yelling at her for the whole fucking neighborhood to hear. Like, do you think she'd be thinking to herself, oh, what must they think when they see this kind of thing? Dude. And that's the problem with a lot of people in society. They don't think, well, how would the other person feel? And it's like, okay, if you and a person are not meant to be, then break up with that person. Get them out of your life, dude. Because you're not doing yourself any favors. Stay in a relationship that makes you unhappy. You really aren't, Facebook. That's something I mentioned in that video before I ended it. After Scott and Tina had calmed down a bit and they sat in Tina's truck and talked for a bit and then that was that. You know what I'm saying? But um, there's a good chance that while I had it on Facebook, someone could have stolen it and uploaded it to fucking YouTube. So <coughs> and. 
And when you hang out, I mean, that's the thing. I don't, know, I don't really hang out with Tina on the weekends. Like, I might see her once in a while, like, if she needs my advice on something or wants to get a hold of Scott, you know what I'm saying, that kind of thing. So, but at the same time, when you associate with someone, you, you know what I'm saying, you, you don't want to be caught in the middle of people's shit. I don't give a fuck if one person's a friend, the other person's kind of a friend, but mostly an acquaintance, you know what I'm saying? But um, that's the kind of shit, like, I know I have my freakouts. I know I'm not perfect by any fucking means whatsoever. But that shit Tina pulled earlier makes me go, well, it's completely unlike her. She's usually so calm and you know, to herself. And and that was just a whole other side. Like, get the fuck out of here with that shit. Hmm. Shit. That tinfoil wand is just wide enough. I could probably push it through to the bowl. And it's not really. There we go. It's not really affecting it too much. But I don't want tinfoil in there when I'm trying to smoke my tobacco. I don't need a fucking filter on my pipe. Fuck that shit. It didn't really create a filter. It just wedged itself into the freaking wall. Like this little and tin foil is used in the oven. So I guess with the little thin thing of tin foil around the wood on the inside could have made it more heat resistant in the stem. <coughs> I'm sitting here trying to poke the bastard out. And it don't want to come out. I should have just used painter's tape to begin with, but that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is gonna end up causing problems. So if I would have used painter's tape in the first place, I could have got to enjoying my tobacco and continuing this little live stream but alas, and that's really just trial and error. So humans have survived by learning. Here's the thing of it. This fucking tin for a little piece does not want to come out. God damn it.
don't. I should have got on to. Something like this might help get it out. I'm on my uh, good scraping tools. So it's a little bit thicker and it's got more girth to it so they don't bend as easy as a paper clip. And it gets in there or it's out, but fuck it was on it. Also, when I was checking the mail, there was a package in the box. No idea what the fuck it could be, but I'll unbox it if it's whatever, it's whatever. It's not a very big package neither. So no idea what it could be. So it could be number of things. Uh, it's not quite, it doesn't really affect the piping. Still, I'm still getting full drawn through it. Yeah, <sighs> At least the stem is nice and tight. as they would say, I suppose. But um, cleaning my pipe out is a dirty business. So I wanna clean off my, I wanna clean off my goddamn hands before I uh, do anything else.
No, I got most of it. I mean, is it perfect? No, but I got most of it. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do now is just take all that tobacco that I was about to smoke in this bowl. And um, now the stem is nice and tight. It's not wobbling around. It looks nice and clean. This pipe still got you drawn it when it's unclogged. And just in case the video didn't post to YouTube when someone might have stolen it. Um, you get a spicy Italian on flatbread, the pepper jack cheese, that shredded cheese, that bacon, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, onions, jalapenos, Parmesan cheese, sandwich oil, mayo, and you have them toasted when they get to the bacon part. Mm. Get some nacho cheese, Doritos, and crush them up on top of that sandwich oiled goodness. Oh yeah, now you're talking. So fucking dank. So fucking dank. I call that the spicy bacon Italian. Spicy bacon Italian? Yeah. Although sometimes in life, things I've noticed never quite go the way we want them to, do they? No, they, ne they never do. You get people who are like, oh, you haven't had it in how long? Oh, bro, that sucks. Like, bro, don't feel sorry for me. I feel sorry for the motherfuckers who are in shitty relationships who want to be out of them but can't because of certain circumstances, like maybe they're helping with bills or maybe they're providing some sort of companionship. And it's sad what people will do for such a thing, but, yeah. All right. Well, here's the package. No idea what it could be, but we're about to find out. Oh, flip it on the other side and be done. There we go. <coughs> awesome. <coughs> yep. <coughs> Ooh. <coughs> that tobacco hits a lot harsher when you clean out your pipe. And the stem is nice and tight. I like that. <laughs> now the tin foil that's resting in the chamber of the stem right here way past the bowl back here it doesn't even affect the taste of it to be honest and it might add a little bit of heat resistance to the thinner part of it right here I don't know but what I do know is the stem's tight Pipes clean, 
and um, the tin foil doesn't affect the taste of my smoke. Excellent. Unfortunately, it rained. But um, that's all right. I like rain, but it makes cigarette butts wet. So that's some extra moist snipe tobacco. I noticed that um, my uh, tobacco pipe stem was rather loose. And um, I was like, you know, this is an easy enough fix. There's got to be a way to fix it that's simple enough. I'm like, I could do that while I share with you that story I shared earlier. <clears throat> I'm walking down the sidewalk carrying my scepter, fucking with the thunder and the lightning. And someone driving by thought it was a large knife or some shit, so they called the cops. The cops stopped me and my buddies. Checked your IDs. I'm like, well, what is that? It says it's a wand. It's a crystal scepter. Why do you have it? Why are you carrying it? I'm spiritual. Oh, okay. Well, I think I've seen you. Are you King Cobra JFS? Yeah, I am. Oh, you make videos right now. Oh, yeah, cool. I've seen your videos. Cool, cool. And he didn't seem like, you know what I'm saying? That's the best thing of it. You make their job easy, they'll make your job easy. And there's just certain people in your life that, yeah, that that kind of logic works, man. Hmm. I'm about to open this here on camera, see what it is. I'm shaking it and I can't even tell what it is, but that's cool. I ain't tripping about it. I'm about to find out here shortly. Go ahead and set that tobacco down for a second. Now with the window being open, that smell is pretty much sucked out of the air. But there's still a nice faint smell of tobacco in the air. So check this out. You give this a squirt. And like magic, the smell disappears, and you really don't need that much. The stuff is strong, like one squirt will do it. But just to show you that it's a consistent spray when you spray it, it's not, you know what I'm saying? Get this stuff for your bathrooms when you, and it gets real nasty. Square this, whew, I'll tell you what, smell evaporated. And I told the cop I'm spiritual and I'm also autistic. And he's like, oh, well, I recognize you. And then, yeah, that pretty much. Huh. Look at that. I didn't even need my uh, knife to open it. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, so what? Stupid nonsense. Get this going. It could be cool. It could be... Whatever, I guess we're about to find out. A very tightly wrapped care package, it looks like. All right. With a note of sorts, aren't we? Let's 
says. Oh, Olivia Five Cigar Sampler, California. No way. Oh, dude, fucking sweet. Hell yeah, this is definitely not a troll package. Thank you to the fan who sent these cigars. That is much obliged. It's a nice little cigar sampler. Fucking sweet. Hell yeah. I even got my cigar cutter I can use too. There's no notes as to say who it came from. It was just oh, cool. All right. Let's dispose of this box and uh, yeah. Noise. Now that I got my pipe unclogged, I'm going to put my unclogging tool back. And uh, there's my cigar cutter over here. No, it is not. It's probably in the drawer there. All right. Asperger's talking some mad shit in this video. Now, you know you got fans that love the shit out of you if they're willing to send you a five cigar sampler. Literally, we got one, two, three, four, and five. Hell fucking yeah, dude. See, this is seriously not what we got. I see this one. Shape two. Oh, I'll give a shout out to um let's see. Make sure I see that right in the light. Fucking cataracts. Shout out to uh, Alex Lamfer. Thank you for the cigars, dude. Really appreciated. He sent a five cigar sampler from Olivia Cigar Company. So five Olivia cigars from California A. From Let's see, Holtz Cigar Company, Inc., Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. If you want to give those cool Cobras a jingle for a cigar, maybe get a catalog, whatever the deal may be, you can reach the uh, Holtz Cigar Company in Philadelphia at 1-800-523-18 or 
one six. Let's cover up those bottom addresses right there. There's the number for that company right there. You're going to give Holtz Cigar Company a jingle. There is their number. Those addresses have mine and the person who sent them's address, so definitely don't want that on camera. Um, 1-800-5231 is either... I think it's a six or an eight. Yeah, it's a six. One six four one. So one eight hundred five two three one six four one. Yeah. Oh, these Olivia cigars. They just. Oh man. Let's get a close up of those labels. Bloody brilliant, man. These all look pretty good. I'll have to sample one of these bad boys right now. Go ahead and break the seal. Surgeon General warning, blah, 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 bite me. We're all going to die sometime, right? We're all going to die sometime, so you might as well go out in style. Oh, they're individually wrapped. Yes. Even better. So as soon as I pull them out of this big container, like right here, each cigar is premium and individually wrapped. Oh, no, these are beautiful looking stogies, man. Hold on, let's get a close up of these on camera before I pick one to try out. There's no way in hell I'm going to smoke all these in one sitting. Oh, fuck no. That would be, oh, dude, that would make me, make me throw up. But, um,. I'm definitely going to try one on camera, you know, might fire up YouTube for this. Seems so I kind of didn't get to do a Subway food review like I planned. You know, I thought it would be a great way to get Homeboy Scotty some exposure for his channel and give Subway some free advertising and lo and behold. Unpredictability. Yeah, buddy. Let's go to new recording. That's the ASMR cigar video. If I turn the sound down like that on the computer, there we go. All right, we'll get a close up of these when I do the video for YouTube. Greetings, fellow YouTubers and social mediators. This is Gothic King Cobra coming back at you with another video. Now, earlier I noticed that the stem of my billiard was rather loose. So instead of using heat to fake it, I used a little bit of painter's tape, which is coming the fuck off. You know, if it's a little bit loose, fuck it. I tried to use painter's tape to fix it, because the stem right here is just wobbly as shit. But it's not so wobbly that I can't smoke out of it. I can still hold it in my mouth and it doesn't just, you know what I'm saying, tip over. 
No, if your stem got so loose that it just tipped over as soon as you tried to put it in your mouth, and you couldn't, yeah, you'd have to get it fixed. Um, there's got to be a way to tighten it, because I noticed that, I noticed that as soon as I fucking tried to heat it up and, with, with the lighter and shit like I had been doing, this structural integrity around the, this part right here is getting weaker and weaker, which is causing the stem to get looser and looser, so I pretty much stopped doing that at this point. It's just, yeah. I mean, it's tight enough that it's not gonna wobble. To be fair, it is over a couple of years old. Now I wanna give a shout out to Alex Lampshire. Lampshire. Hopefully I pronounced your name right. One of my fans just sent me five Olivia cigars from California, manufactured from the uh, Holtz Cigar Company over in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I got a nice little sampler. Get a look at these sexy cigars. And they all came together individually wrapped and then wrapped again in a much bigger container. But I got them all opened up minus the individual part. There's that label. Yeah. And this is definitely a sampler pack, baby. See, I like this one right here. I like the label on this one is cool looking. Look at that. I like the way the label looks on that. On that old Olivia right there. The, the Olivia number three. Whatever that's called. And then we got something nice and light on the flavor. And of course, a little bit darker, but not too much darker. And then this thing, which is also a little bit darker. Now the lighter cigars tend to be a lot lighter in flavor, not quite as harsh. You know, with darker cigars tend to have a more complex flavor. So I managed to fix my pipe and then well, fuck it, the stem's not wobbling. So if you'd like to give Holtz Cigar Company a jingle YouTube, I also got you on Facebook Live when I do a cigar review out of the Olivia stash. Let's see. 1-800-523-1641. That's Holtz Cigar Company over on Townsend Road, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And again, a shout out to Alex Lamfer, spelt Lamfer, P-H-E-R. E for your generous contribution. I look forward to definitely trying these. Gift order, very nice, very nice. It just says Olivia Five Cigar Sampler, California. It doesn't say what flavor they are. Yeah, different cigars have different flavors. It's a no-brainer. And uh, if you're going to smoke a fucking cigar, you bust out a torch or a Zippo and your cigar cutter. So then after smoking this one, I'll have four good cigars left. That I'll keep in a very safe spot because I don't want these getting fucked with. So, Alex Leffer, this one's for you. I'm going to spark this one up for you. Thank you for the cigars. 
<clears throat> excuse me. Sometimes if they don't come open and you don't want to squeeze them and risk breaking the leaf. Boom, just like that. Now this is cool looking YouTube, check this out. I've seen cigars that are rolled like this before. They're more, this one's more of a square shape. Yeah, dude. These cigars aren't like traditionally rolled like a circle. They're rolled differently, which I don't even care. I'm grateful for free cigars, dude. I don't even care. You know for a fact, YouTube, that your fans love you when they do shit like this. And this label on the front, man, let's get a look at a close look at that. Yeah, I like the way that looks. That's cool looking. That's a sweet label, man. All right, let's give it a whiff. God damn. Ooh, I like that. There's a lot of bold smell going into that. Really, there's no way to describe how it smells. It just smells like a cigar. It's a really, really fine, rich cigar. <sighs> My cigar cutter that I bought from the Reals of Cigar Shop a while back. Now you see where this cap is at right here on the end. You want to cut, the, you see where that line sits right there. You want to cut before that line for a nice cut. Oh yeah, perfect cut, baby. You see the end of the cap right there attached to the cigar. And then you see right before the cap, right there, I cut that bitch, boom. Got to get the cigar cutter. I'll take the shavings out of it real quick. Okay, now if that sort of thing happens when you cut it, that can happen when you're smoking cigars. So the leaf starts coming unraveled. Don't even trip. Gonna go like that. And it looks a little funky, but you get some saliva and you moisten that leaf down into itself, just like that. Dry your fingers off. You take a lighter and kind of dry it off right quick. Very lightly. Give it some moisture. There we go. Beautiful. Let's fix that issue right quick. Hell yeah. So if you're joining me live on Facebook, Alex Lampshire sent me a five cigar sampler from Olivia Cigar Company. And, um, mm. oh, hang on. And uh, five massive stogies like this one, but different, different flavors, all from the same company. And um, I'm liking the flavor on this one.
And there's no way in hell I'm going to be able to smoke all these in one night, YouTube and Facebook. But I'm having a massive nicotine craving and it's bad enough where I'm just like, you know, I'm covered. You ever see cigars rolled like this, YouTube? The box shaped. Yeah. I've seen some cigars that are rolled like that, rolled more square, rolled into a cone. It doesn't matter how they're rolled. Though the shape of the roll does not affect the taste. Now, what affects the taste of a good cigar? You got the tobacco on the inside, what flavor was used in that tobacco, maybe a rum or a vanilla or a coffee. And then you get the wrap itself, depending on how dark the wrap is, depending on how rich the flavor. Now, if I take, let's see, the lightest colored cigar out of the five compared to this one, you see the difference. Now this one, compared to this one, they're about the same, but this one's a little bit darker. And you never know what you're gonna get with a good cigar, what kind of flavors you might pick up on. Let it catch up a bit, and then boom, the ash is starting to uh, even out nicely. Look at that. Holy shit, YouTube. Whew. Damn. I about died on that inhale. Whew. Dude. Oh. <coughs> Generally speaking, you're not supposed to inhale cigars, but I do because it's my tobacco. Generally, you're supposed to kind of puff on them, and it's like sampling a fine wine. Yeah, you know, my stem of my pipe's a little bit loose, but it's not so loose that I can't smoke out of it. So I will live with it. I mean, it doesn't hurt to try to fix it. I tried. And the tin foil I use ended up getting stuck inside the pipe around the chamber of the stem. But it doesn't affect the flow of the air or anything. And the painter's tape came off. This is my point exactly, Facebook and YouTube. Why am I stressing the dating scene when I got fans who can send me, who can and do send me awesome stuff like this? Like I get five free cigars in the mail. I'm like, yo, hey, check these out. Right on. Hey, hey, you guys. These guys. It definitely puts out a nice cloud. I like that. It's a nice bold cigar. The flavors on it, it's it's a very basic flavored cigar. You know what I'm saying? And that's not a bad. This is a really good cigar. Right? We my basic. It's it's a plain flavor. It's not like the grape swishers I was smoking on earlier. Those are great mini cigars. This isn't like that. This is more premium, higher end. You know, fancier cigars. The kind you have to cut and toast. And, yeah.
That's exactly what I'm getting at. If chicks want to reject me, that's their loss, not mine. I got a legion of fangirls who watch my videos. So, yeah. Now, here's another great way to keep that paper down. The one that was coming unwrapped up here. I just moved the cigar label all the way to the back. This allows for me to enjoy the full length of it again. I had to sample one of these to the very end, at least on camera, just once. If not every so often, I'm not gonna like sit here every 10 hours and hot box the fuck out of these. It's just, yeah, no. What up, Malcolm Ramsey? I had a uh, fan named Alex Lampshire send me a five cigar sampler. Just chilling out, enjoying a nice cigar. What are you up to? But don't mind me, YouTube. I'm making a video on Facebook Live. So that way my fans can see the video before it hits YouTube. Yes, sir. You know you got fans that love you when they send you five free cigars. Hmm. I never had Olivia cigars before, but my first impression is I like it. I like it a lot. Olivia cigars are good. My first impression is always the big thing for me. And that's pretty much true for anyone I've noticed is that if your first impression of something is you like it, then chances are you might like all the other flavors they offer. And that doesn't necessarily have to pertain to cigars. That can also pertain to food and soda pop and what have you. You know, this cigar definitely gives you some gnarly pins and needles if you try to inhale it. Oh. General rule of thumb, the darker the cigar, the stronger and harsher it may be. And it's the same way with pipe tobacco in a sense. I mean, you look at Black Cavendish, for instance, which usually has like vanilla or coffee sort of flavoring added to it to sweeten it out a bit. But then it's also got a natural tobacco flavoring and the aging process too. Black Cavendish is aged longer and grown differently. That's why it's darker in color.
Indeed. Good question. Malcolm on Facebook live chat asks the question, how did you learn so much about cigars and tobacco? Trying it, experiencing it, and watching a lot of how-to videos. So that way, you go to try the pipe for the first time or a fine cigar, and you're not just ruining your experience the first time, you know. You know, I can't quite pin the flavor on this cigar, YouTube, but whatever it is, I like it. It's a nice, bold cigar flavor. There you go. Well, hey, Malcolm, if you're gonna try a cigar for the first time, might I recommend black and mild wood tip wine or wood tip jazz cigars? They're a little bit cheaper than the expensive cigars and they're not as big. You don't have to cut them. All you gotta do is light it. You know what I'm saying? And that's something to think about too, YouTube, is you don't have to be Daddy Warbucks to smoke a pipe or enjoy a fine cigar. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, I've seen cigars advertised on pipesandcigars.com that were wrapped with gold leaf tobacco. No bullshit. Cigar was wrapped in gold and you could smoke it. And these fuckers are like four or $500 a cigar. I mean, that's just the kind of shit. Like, if I won the lottery and built my dream house, I'm chilling out in my clock tower. We're like... Hey, YouTube, doing a cigar review in my clock tower. Check this shit out. This fucking cigar is wrapped in gold, motherfucker. That's ballin' as shit. Hello, Jamie Perry, making a live video for Facebook and a video for YouTube at the same time. Which is what I was trying to do earlier, but some drama that or the not get into on. It's just leave it at that. Yeah. Honestly, I just I don't like being caught in between two people's bullshit. I really don't. You know what I'm saying? Facebook and YouTube. It's like fucking goddamn, dude. Like I'm so done with drama. Well, that's the thing of it, too, is the person involved started arguing. Okay, to go into very basic detail, a homie of mine, I'm not going to go into which one, and his baby mama are basically breaking up. Okay, I get that, but that doesn't mean you have to drag me into it, you know what I'm saying? Like, if my homie's feeling depressed about certain shit, then yes, I'm glad he talks to me because that's what friends do for each other. But at the same time, I don't need his ex 
coming over and yelling. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but that was some bullshit. Facebook and YouTuber, goddamn. And I'm sure if you heard her side of the story, you get this, oh, you don't understand. I'm sorry, but blah, 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 blah. And here we go. He said, she said, blah, 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 blah. Fuck it. And the whole time I'm like, okay, me and homie are going to, me and homeboy, one of my friends and me are going to eat some Subway on camera, do a review, some dank ass sandwiches, not even trip about it, you know, whatever, just, hey, what's up, this is uh, what we're reviewing, check this out, you know, blah, blah, blah. And um, I wanted to review and showcase my favorite sandwich. But not just my favorite sandwich, my favorite way to make it. Like, the whole time I'm hearing this blah, 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 blah. I'm hearing people fighting outside over stupid shit. Or people yelling, or persons, whatever. I'm tuning it out, I'm taking a bite of myself, I'm like, oh, that's good. No, if you want to try the sub I speak of at Subway, might I recommend the spicy Italian on flatbread. You get it with pepper jack cheese, shredded cheese, bacon, you have it toasted. And you put lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, onions on it with jalapenos, parmesan cheese, sandwich oil, and mayonnaise. Boom. And... To complete it, you get some like nacho cheese Doritos and put them on top of the sandwich and just crunch that bitch up in there. Yeah. If you like spicy and you're not allergic to any of those ingredients, I definitely recommend it. I call it the spicy bacon Italian Doritos Subway sandwich. I mean, it sounds pretty good. It is good. Like, that's, you know, that's what I usually get personally if I'm at Subway. And that's the thing of it, man. There's restaurants like Subway. You can create your own shit. So everybody got their thing that they do. You know what I'm saying? You go to like Burger King, McDonald's, whatever. People got their thing, man. Malcolm is asking if I've ever heard of pot smokers' cigars. Yes, I have. There's blunts. You can roll blunts with zigzag cigar papers if you're good at rolling. If you're in Colorado, grind up your shit. You know what I'm saying? They also have canagars, which are basically you take some fucking weed, you grind it up, and then you stick the weed together with some with some fucking wax and the entire string around it with a stick through it. So that way there's an even hole all the way through and then you let it cure and dry. And then when it's all stuck together, you untie the string and then you take a cannabis leaf and you wrap it tightly but not too tightly around your bud, and then tie it off a string, let it dry. And you basically have a canagar. And a canagar is basically like a regular tobacco cigar, but it's all made out of weed. Instead of being tobacco leaf wrapping around it, it's pot leaf. They're called tie sticks, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah. If I was in a spot where no one gave me shit about it, maybe I was at a concert in Colorado and a fan handed me a can of guard, like, dude, let's pass this shit around. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's do it.
Yeah. And if you want to add more leaves to your canagar, you want to have the string when it's done curing. You basically want to use like THC wax to stick the canagar leaves together to the bud and then you tie it to the string. And when it dries and cures, untie it. Want to add more cannabis leaves to it, just repeat the last step. You know what I'm saying? And you can make them fuckers. You know what I'm saying? Like mobster stats, like, hey, these guys. Now, speaking of marijuana, YouTube, when it becomes legal, I would like to grow my own hybrid strain. I want to crossbreed Black Magic, Green Crack, Rainbow Kush, Fruity Kush, King Buddha G Kush, Maui Waui, Durban Poison, and Guji Golden Cobra. And it would make such a beautiful sativa hybrid. Buzz on it would be like this fucking big and about that fucking long. A giant fucking colorful weed, colorful, giant, colorful, strong ass weed. <laughs> Shit, dude. Mixing all that. I should also include Maui Waui into that string mix, believe it or not. Let's see, Black Magic, Green Crack, Rainbow Kush, Fruity Kush, King Bud, Maui Waui, Durban Poison. Gucci Golden Cobra. That's eight strains. That would be the eight strain wonder they call King Cobra's Chronic. This shit would fucking get you stoned. And if you're taking some of the prettiest, biggest, and strongest bud available and just crossbreeding it into a beautiful strain. Now here's the thing, if you live in Colorado where it's perfectly legal to grow and you want to crossbreed all fucking eight of those strains into one, have at it, Haas, I encourage it, man. Because the sooner that string gets growing, the better. And you got to crossbreed them two at a time until those eight strains become four. And then those four strains become two. And those two strains become one strain. And then when that one strain starts producing seeds, you want to save those seeds and replant them. And once you get a couple of, like say you got a 12 plant limit. You know what I'm saying? So you can literally have the first four crossbred and still be in legal, legal limit. And then if you're taking the strains, the first four that were crossbred together and crossbreeding four more in them together and shit, fucking hell yeah, dude. Oof. Just picturing up these big ass fucking nubs. Oh man. It is glorious. And dating is a lot like enjoying a fine cigar. Don't be in a rush to get to the finish. Take your time to do things right. If you're in a rush to go through and smoke your cigar, it comes unwrapped. 
Uh, it doesn't stay lit right. Or maybe it canoes just a little bit. <clears throat> But it's an easy enough fix. Now, there are times that being single does suck, I will not deny that. But when your friends are fighting with their exes over stupid shit, you can't help but sit there and say, sing alive and just do a little jig. Something I've mentioned, and I will mention it now, is having a girlfriend is awesome, but it makes you so vulnerable. Because if you were to fucking lose her, that's your whole world, YouTube. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Long distance relationships never work. I mean, when you're willing to try people from different states because the people in your state suck that hard. I get it. 100%. But how the fuck are you going to make that shit work when... Instead of being three to four hours away, you're three to four states away. It's a long ass fucking drive. And here's the thing of it. You're not always gonna be able to see what the other person's doing. Eh? So how the fuck do you know they're not cheating on you? If they're two, three, four states away, you can't see everything they do, can you? Especially if they're at a bar drinking because, you know, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that kind of long distance crap takes dedication and discipline. And the thing you have to ask yourself is, is that person worth it? They may make you happy for now, but later on down the road, YouTube, you could find somebody that makes you happier. Funny how life works out like that. Oof. And uh, yeah, that's rough there, uh, Malcolm. Sorry to hear it, bro. Malcolm said one time he had a girlfriend, and he said his girlfriend was long distance, and she caught him cheating on him with another dude because she accidentally sent him the video of the dude she was doing on camera. That is some bullshit, ma'am. Yep.
Men and women are dicks to each other. Can I just say that? Oh, wait, I did. There's no going back from it. Men and women use each other for sex and money all the fucking time. And you hear women complain, oh, men are just assholes. All they want is pussy. That's all they're using us for. And you hear men make the same fucking argument. Oh, women are just bitches. All they want is, is our fucking money, you know? And it's like, fuck that shit, dude. You want to make the dating scene a better place for everybody else, you too. If the person's not your type and they're being polite about asking you out, let them down gently. If they're being a dick and they're being perverted and creepy about it and you don't like it, be more persistent. I get that. But um, wouldn't it suck if you had a birthday coming up and your so-called boyfriend or girlfriend is long distance and lo and fucking behold, they miss your big 27. Shit. That's like three to four years from your dirty 30. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't matter how old you're getting, period, man. If it was my girlfriend's birthday, I'd make for damn sure I was there. Even if I knew I, I didn't have a way of getting there, if it was long distance, and I had no other way but to fucking walk or hitch a ride, and it took me a couple days to get there, I'd make for sure I got there on time for her birthday. Shit. You sit there and say, oh, this girl is something special, but you can't even make it for her own fucking birthday. Like, what's your excuse, man? <laughs> and then you see motherfuckers doing, man, I'm trying not to bring p other people's personal shit into this, but man, there are some stupid motherfucking guys out there, man. There are some stupid fucking guys out there. Oh, my God. There are some guys that have amazing girlfriends and they do stupid shit. Says the guy, okay, if we're going to bring up my past, go right ahead. Fuck it, I'm a hypocrite. I'll admit that. But here's the thing. I haven't cheated on a girl since. Because some guys can learn from their mistakes. Some guys are just stupid, you know. And the guys that are stupid assholes kind of ruin it for guys like me. Because then, you know. And it's the same fucking scenario with nice girls. There's a lot of nice chicks out there trying to find someone to be with. But collectively, when you're being a dick to people in the dating scene, it spreads. That, that sort of emotion and that... I wouldn't call it negativity necessarily. I'd just call it unfair treatment, unfair double standard bullshit. That kind of thing spreads. It's no different with social media. You might see somebody starting a YouTube channel and then they get enough followers and it might inspire other people to start a channel and they think, okay, maybe I should, uh, maybe I should do that. So they start a channel and then they come to find out that being a YouTuber is not as glamorous or as easy as it's made out. A lot of YouTubers are just like celebrities are just like any one of us. We're human to an extent and we go through emotions and we deal with crap off a of camera. And there are times if certain people on YouTube who make videos, if they're sad and they have a hard time hiding it, it's going to show, you know. And there are some YouTubers who try to hide in this fake persona of, okay, you know, I don't want to let them know. You know, they're going to have this fake smile like everything's just hunky-dory, you know. But this is what I find funny about society, YouTube, when it comes to the battle of the sexes, if you want to call it that. If a dude has big ass biceps to pick up chicks and get them to notice, and a chick makes a compliment, oh, nice biceps. <laughs> Thanks, eh? You know, most guys in that situation, of course, get big biceps to pick up chicks.
However, if a girl has a nice pair of boobs or a nice ass or a nice shapely figure, you know what I'm saying? Just looks good in general. Maybe she's got nice hair, really pretty eyes. It, it don't matter, dude. If a guy makes a comment towards a woman like that, a woman can sit there and say, oh, nice muscles, right? But if a guy says, oh, hey, baby, nice tits, she can look at him and be like, oh, that's sexual harassment. Excuse me? But if you make a comp if you make a comment about the bulge in my pants, if you make a comment about the bulge in my pants and you say, damn gothic king cover, your bulge looks nice. You know, look, and this is the kicker of it. It, it. It's an ironic bitch, but it's the fucking truth. You know, women can get away with sexual harassment. Guys can't. Because of that social standard that all guys want is sex. It's nice, but cuddling's nice too. Shit, conversation. Taking her out to, to eat and showing her off to the world like, yeah, look what I got. Sucks to be you, you don't have her. You know what I'm saying, Facebook? Yeah. Now, the other day I was going to Home Depot to get some supplies and... Um, this chick's talking to this dude, and she got some booty shorts on. It's summertime, I get that. And she had a nice shaped ass. I'm like, walk out the door. All I did was check her out. And then as soon as I walk out the door, I thought I was out of ear range. And I commented to myself, damn, she had a nice ass. And as soon as I said, damn, she had a nice ass, she heard me. And she got all offended, like, oh my God, that's sexual harassment. And I'm like, I'll show you sexual harassment. I could have walked up and said, hey, baby, you want to fuck? Take you back to my place. I could have slapped your ass. That's sexual harassment. That's borderline rape, for fuck's sake. And after I said that, I'm like, second of all, I haven't had sex in seven months. Third of all, I'm a fucking YouTube celebrity. And fourth of all, I'm autistic. I don't know about you, but even if the chick wasn't my standards... If I had a chick that hadn't been late in seven months checking me out, I'm like, hey, I take that shit as a goddamn compliment. But can you say it's rape, YouTube, when it's a chick you want pinning you to the bed and fucking your brains out? <coughs> no, you can't. You can't. When it's someone you find attractive hitting on you, you can't. As a guy, you can't. And it's the same thing with women, dude. Like, whenever it's a dude they find attractive hitting on them, you know, batting their eyelashes, you know, gushy-eyed and this and that bullshit. But when it's a dude they don't find attractive, it's a dude they're turned off by or creeped out by, it's, oh, gross, right? Double standards, right? Not all guys like the same thing. Some guys like fat chicks. Some guys like skinny chicks. It don't matter. That's what makes the dating scene so beautiful. If everybody liked the same thing, YouTube, it would make dating impossible. If everybody, if everybody had a thing for smoking hot vampiric goth chicks, then that would suck for me. Because then, yeah, you know, fuck, dude, getting a goth girlfriend would be ten times harder than it already is. And here's the thing of it. That being said, if a guy says, well, I don't like fat chicks, I like big boobs, and I cannot lie. Some overly sensitive woman might be like, well, how dare you oppressive pig? All you men are just the same. All you want is big boobs and a big jiggly ass. But then if that chick likes dudes with big dicks and fucking muscle, and she sees one walking by, I guarantee you she's gonna fucking stare and be like, hey, what's up? And then when it's some fat, creepy dude covered in Cheetos and grease, got no fucking hair, looking at her with his sweaty, beady eyes, going, mm, baby, you look delicious enough to eat. Oh, I could lick you like a Twinkie. And she's sitting there going, oh. But she had no problems giving that guy that argument, all women's bodies are beautiful. You're a pig for having standards. Okay. Okay. Not to be that guy, but ladies, if guys are pigs for having standards, then does that make you cunts for having standards?
Oh, he said a bad word. That's offensive. So stop letting it offend you. You get offended by words like cunt, retard, fuck, shit, and piss. And people are like, oh my god, they're, oh, oh. Okay, it's not like I shat on your dead dog's grave. I didn't graffiti your grandmother's tombstone. I didn't call you, your mother a slut to her face. I didn't bitch slap your sister and gave your 18-year-old daughter a blister. I didn't do none of that shit. I just say a couple of words. Ooh, ooh. The reason why they're called offensive words is because you're you're letting them offend you. Plain and fucking simple. And if people call you a retard and you actually have a physical or mental retardation, be like, so? Hell yeah, man. Thanks for noticing. People are like, oh, you shouldn't say the word retarded. It's not, it's not politically correct. Dude, fuck political correctness. That's a pain in the ass, burgers. I'm all for political correctness and social justice, but there are some people who just... These politically overly correct bigots who take it way too fucking far. They think everything is sexist and everything's racist. And blah. if parents are at a restaurant going, oh, this is our new baby boy. Or if parents are at a restaurant going, this is our baby girl, this is our baby boy, blah, blah, blah. These assholes come up. Oh, you, you, you can't call your kid a boy or a girl. Why not? It came out of her, that sex. Well, your kid's not old enough to decide what sex it it wants to be. So that's not politically correct. You could turn around and be like, did you just call my kid an it? Who the fuck are you? It's not an it, it's a person with feelings and emotions and just, oh yeah, dude. Those kinds of fucking arguments give me a fucking headache. Like, fuck that shit, YouTube. These are the same bigoted assholes that get pissed off when people breastfeed in public. Oh, heaven forbid. What, are you a faggot or just really prude? Because the way I see it, if I'm trying to enjoy my shopping or if I'm at a restaurant trying to eat my food, kids got to eat too. And being a parent in a, today's busy world is not exactly easy. There's a lot of stuff you got to do, planning, this and that. You know what I'm saying? Facebook and YouTube. So sometimes, if you're in a fucking hurry, the mother's going to forget to pump herself. It happens. So if she doesn't have a bottle on hand, and all she has to do is pull out and break it, there you go, done. And even if you see some boobs, who the fuck cares? Like, that's the thing of it, YouTube. Our society has sexualized the woman body, the female form. It's disgusting. People like Hugh Hefner are like, no. A woman's body can be sexy, but it doesn't have to be sexual to be sexy. You want pornographic, read a fucking hustler. But back then, society was like, oh. Back then, society, it was, it was just, society is way more prudent back then than it was now. But explain this one to me, Facebook. Most parents don't want their kids doing it with other kids. I get that. You know, it's, come on. You were that age once. You know exactly how it goes. So don't lie to your kids with abstinence-only education. That kind of sex education doesn't work. Especially in a society that says, well... Makes you feel like shit if you ain't got nobody. Society puts all this pressure on people to have sex in relationships and then makes you feel like shit if you don't have anybody. And then if you get too much of it, they call you a pig or a slut because, you know, hey. And women think may think that they're the only ones who have to deal with unfair body types unfortunately men go through that shit too men and women are unfortunately held to the same standards just in different forms 
you know, to sit here and complain about sexist treatment when it happens to both sexes. So, yeah. And here's the kicker of it. If a woman goes to the cops and says she's raped, it's handled instantly. She's considered a hero and a survivor and a fighter for fighting off her attacker. But if a male is raped by a female and he goes to the cops and says a female raped me, they laugh at his sorry ass like, okay, can you please give us a description of the, the assailant? And the dude's looking at him like, dude, come on, really? I'm married. My wife's going to kill me. She, I don't want her thinking I'm cheating on her. No, you don't even know, dude. That bitch was like Hulk Hogan, man. Or that bitch was like Jabba the Hutt. She fucking pinned me the fuck down, dude. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden the cops were like, oh, okay, hey, okay, hey, hey, yeah, sure, okay. Then they start going, whoa, okay, I understand. Okay, yeah, well. Huh. What's the deal with man spreading anyways? Like, okay, I'm a guy, I get it. I got big balls and a big dick, and you know what I'm saying? If, as long as I'm not blocking the aisle, who the fuck cares? But there are some women who get so offended by that shit and it's like okay is your feminine identity so insecure i'm not blocking the aisle i'm minding my own fucking business just but it's this younger this younger this younger millennial attitude of you oppressive pig who the fuck do you think you are i'm like i'm just sitting here Ugh, what you're doing is man spreading like, bitch, I'm not blocking the aisle, so how about you fuck off? Well, how about that? Well, I never, never had an orgasm. No wonder why you're so uptight. Fuck you. What time, what place, what position, honey? Can I buy you a drink? How about a screaming orgasm? Oh, well, I don't drink. Well, you're no fun. That's the kind of fucking ass you gotta have with women. You gotta be a gentleman. You gotta, uh, you know what I'm saying? But you gotta be a gentleman who don't give a shit. Just kind of have that fucking attitude like, hey, hey. You guys. How do you succeed in life by not taking shit from nobody? Not letting people walk all over you like a goddamn doormat, YouTube. By taking the opportunity that's by taking opportunities that are best for you. And sometimes making decisions is not easy. That's life. Oh, I can sleep just fine, but right now I'm enjoying a fine cigar from one of the five cigars that one of my fans sent me. Miss, uh, Gina Garza's, Garza's, or Garza. Yeah. I mean, I could sit here and complain about this shit, but it, it wouldn't do me any good, Facebook, because those bigoted assholes would be back at it again, like, um, excuse me, but you better check your privilege. You're a white male. You don't know how good you have it. Oh, really? Okay, so when it comes to domestic abuse, people hitting each other, if a woman fights off her attacker, she's brave, courageous, and a survivor. But instead of getting laughed at, if a male fights off his attacker, oh, he's a piece of shit for hitting women. Who the fuck does he think he is? So it's like men aren't even allowed to defend themselves in a fair fight. 
because of our sexist standards. And if a woman's trying to hit you like a man and then expects not to get hit back, that's kind of unfair. And then in, in that kind of situation, society telling you not to hit a woman, that's like saying she's weak and she can't handle it. What, what the fuck, dude? Fuck that shit. And there are some women who take advantage of that shit. Oh, he's a dude. He's not going to hit me. Uh-huh. I don't go looking for fights, but uh, if one comes my way, hmm, I'm fucking autistic. So that's a federal offense to hit somebody with a disorder. So I don't give a fuck how big the other person is. I got that in my back pocket. I don't take advantage of it, but that's nice to have. So it doesn't matter what the fuck I say, you fucking hit me, that's federal prison time, buddy. You'll be wearing red M&Ms for fucking lipstick. So earlier I was hanging out with some friends and I had my scepter with me and I'm walking around town with my scepter and, uh, Apparently, someone thought my scepter was a giant knife or a sword or some shit, so they called the cops on me. They're like, there's a suspicious-looking character walking with a giant knife downtown. So this cop stopped me, and his buddy's standing behind me and my friends, and this third cop gets out. Uh, she's walking over to us like, you know, and looking like she needs something to do, you know, and second cop that's there is like, we got to hold on this. Me and my friends were not being belligerent. We were being very compliant. The cop explained it to me, and he goes, so why the hell do you have that thing? And I'm like, well, it's a crystal scepter. I carry it because I'm autistic and I'm spiritual. I make wands. And he goes, oh, wait, you're King Kobo GFS, aren't you? Right on. All right, man, you guys are good. Here's your ID. Have fun playing with the thunder. And I told him, he's like, why the hell do you have it? And I'm like, I'm playing with thunderstorms. And the cop's like, oh, all right, have fun playing with the thunderstorm. As soon as the cop took off, I took my scepter and I went like that and pointed at the sky. And as soon as I did, a big old burst of thunder went. You heard the cop sit next to his buddy and the cruiser going, that was fucking legit. He didn't say it like that, but it was like, damn, dude. Witnessing that shit like, oh, he wasn't lying to us. He was playing with a thunderstorm. Huh? How about that? I don't give a fuck what race you are, dude. If you make cops' lives easy, they'll make your lives easy. It's just that fucking simple. Yeah, there are some cops that are bad, but that's just life, unfortunately. You know? I'm talking in general. Like, I hate to say it, but if you're walking around with an airsoft gun that looks realistic and some older person sees you walk, walking around the park with it and from a distance there's no orange tip and it looks realistic, she's going to think something's up, dude. And she calls dispatch and says it may or may not be real. And dispatch fails to say that. The cops are going in there trained thinking it's a real gun, doing their job. And then if it just happens to be a minority or some 13-year-old black kid getting shot, yeah, it's tragic as fuck, but what do you expect, dude? Fucking dispatch didn't do their fucking job. They didn't, you know what I'm saying? I, when I saw that fucking story, I'm like, ah. Now, here's the thing. When I was a kid, my parents said, hey, if you have a toy gun that looks realistic, you play with it indoors because you could get shot by the cops because they could mistake it for a real gun. That's what I was taught growing up, because when I was a kid growing up, I had toy guns, trust and belief. Cap guns, I get that, you know. Playing cops and robbers with your friends, I get that, you know what I'm saying. I'm a 90s kid, I get that. But that's just common fucking sense, man. And there was some racism involved with that issue, but a lot of that was just common sense and a lack of communication. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the fuckery of it. Gina Gaza asks, how old am I? Good question. I am 27 years of age. Be 28 in March. Doing a little cigar video and kind of bullshitting and ranting and raving, you know, doing a thing. And what happened when the cop showed up to and asked that kid, did he drop his gun? No. He was being a typical defiant, cocky little teenager. And they went in there thinking it was a real gun, so of course he was going to get, you know what I'm saying? Like, I hate to say it, but it's the fucking truth, dude. Like, god damn, dude. I heard about that shit. People are just shaking their head at that going, man, this kid was gunned down in a park. Cause he, fuck, dude. Now they, they could have tasered him, yes. They could have maced him. That would have been a, a bit more ideal. But I get it. Like, you can't take the chance on it being a real gun. Like, especially if dispatch says, oh, the person that called it in says it might be fake, but they're not sure. Like, if you fail to say those simple fucking words, those simple couple of words, they would have run in there a little less trigger happy and a little more, okay, 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 what's, what's this? And what's the likelihood of a 13-year-old having a gun, a, an actual pistol? Not very likely, but with these kids and their stupid mass shootings, it's, ugh, dude. Maybe they stole from their older brother or their dad's closet or some shit, or their uncle or whatever, or their grandpa, you know what I'm saying? Shit. The man-hating women who love to say men and their guns, shut the fuck up. We had a shooting at the YouTube building. No one died except for the shooter. And get this, it was a female. Women who love glorifying the first woman this, the first woman that. Now we have the first female mass shooter. There you go. At this point, it wouldn't surprise me. We've already had a gay shoot up a nightclub. And now we've already had a trans... What's next? A trans shooting up the place? Like, seriously, Caitlyn Jenner just can't take it no more. She's got a newsy look out. God damn. Think about it. Like, you, mass shootings don't discriminate. Unless you're getting shot at. That's just the shitty part of it. <laughs> like, you can't sit there and... You, you can't sit there and stereotype mass shooters as some autistic white kid. Oh, dude, jokes like that fucking, ooh, dude. I love guns and I hate mass shootings. And for one, innocent lives are taken. And two, it makes guns look bad. And we got to sit here and play the same old fucking bullshit argument. Well, this is why we need to ban guns. Okay, well, if you ban guns, that makes an underground enterprise form. And it creates a black market. At least with them being sold, even if it's with an expired ID, which should be changed. You should not be allowed to get an AR-15 with a goddamn expired ID. That is bullshit. That's bullshit. That is complete bullshit. That, that, I don't, nah, nah, dude. Nah, dude, I'm all for the right to bear arms, but that's, that's bullshit, dude. That is, that is some cockamamie bullshit. And it's just like alcohol, man. When we had alcohol prohibition... People are finding ways to make their own, or they knew somebody who had it, and it'd be no different if you banned guns. It would create more crime and more murder. There are several stores that require you to have a proper ID that's not expired, that has your current address. There was some process before, you know what I'm saying? But all these fucking mass shootings are taking innocent lives. They're making guns look bad. 
They're taking innocence out of a country. You know, parents could take their kids to the park, let them run around and blow off steam. And they could run around with cap guns and pew, pew, pew. And no one thought twice about it. You know what I'm saying? The caps, cap guns back in the day were so much louder. But they had to make them quieter so people wouldn't mistake it for a real gun. That's happened in the past, unfortunately. Like, I remember when I got a cap gun as a kid. My family was like, that's an outside toy. You go outside with one of those cheap little snubby dollar store cap guns, glittering in there. You fucking pop the trigger and you, you, that, you hear it echo, dude. I seen a video on YouTube, some kids reviewing a cap gun. I'm like, okay, that'll take me back. I'll check this out. And it's like, see, it makes a little popping noise. And then when he pulls the trigger, it's like, Pop. like, dude, those poppers on the 4th of July are louder. What the fuck? And then come to find out, eh, shithead brothers taking their cap gun. Sticking it to their sister's ear and going, pop as loud as they can. It's making people go deaf. And then people must take it for a real gun in the distance. And then, yeah. Stupid people ruin it for everybody, man. That's how it always is. It's... But I'm sitting here smoking this cigar in real time. These things take a minute to finish, dude. There's no way now I can smoke four of these, in, four or five of these in one sitting. I'm doing excellent, Jeffrey. Thank you for asking. If you're just tuning into my Facebook Live video, I had a fan send me a pretty sweet care package, ma'am. We're talking... Five premium cigars from Olivia Cigar Company. Different different uh, flavors and strengths to try. Yeah. And you know your fans love you when they're sending you free cigars. I mean, come on. Come on. <laughs> Let's get a side shot of those arms. Now we're talking. Oh yeah, glorious. Got that autistic retard strength going. Good question. I don't make stabs for Etsy at the moment. I make crystal scepters, which are a little bit smaller, but contain crystals on the end. And for my crystal scepters, I charge $54. And in order to get one, you have to wait until I make one for Etsy. And I don't make them that often because they're expensive as fuck to make. And the shipping them is a bit more delicate.
Oh, yeah, kudos for the free cigars. Really appreciate that. This still gives me a nice little roach to smoke on for later, man. So I'm going to put this out for later. Set it down in the ash tree on top of the ash. So it puts itself out. Oh. There's a faint smell of cigar in the air. Very steamy, delicious smelling cigar scent. So maybe you're done taking a shit, YouTube. Or maybe you get done smoking a cigar and you want to cover up the scent of it. Get yourself some Ozium. Give these cool cobras some free advertising. Now I was cleaning out my pipe while I fixed it, or tried to fix it rather, and my hands got dirty as a result. Four sprays that way, four sprays that way, that'll do it. Boom, that Ozium immediately overpowered the smell of the cigar. Putting this product to the test on camera. Boom. Ozium is great. Even two scores on either side would have been fine, but four scores just overpowered it. Boom. YouTube. Thank you for watching my cigar video and rant, and I'll catch you all on the flip side. There we go. All right, Facebook, I'm going to save this video as a cigar review. Keep going with Facebook Live a wee bit longer here. Oh, excuse me. Not a whole lot, Emerald. Just got done filming a cigar video for YouTube. And I did it live on Facebook so I could answer chat while doing the video. Uh, 
right, so the drawing's in one more day. Two hundred, or, or excuse me, three hundred and forty, or two hundred and forty, whatever, some odd million. Yes, yeah, that's, that's too so many. Quite personally, I don't give a shit how shitty women treat me. It doesn't justify me returning the same. Anyways, Facebook, I'll catch you all on the flip side. Watch some cartoons and pass the fuck out. Catch you on the flip side.